And so your father was a, or is a born again uh, pastor, right? Uh, my biological father. Right, your I, biological I've, nev- father. I've never met him, no. You've never met your biological father? No. You never met him? I never thought you met him. met him once. I talked to him on the phone once. Oh. Uh, physically, face to face, I've never met the man, so I couldn't tell you. Really? No. And so why haven't you met him? Uh, how do I say this without being too colorful? Uh, there's certain things that were done between him and my mother before I was born that, you know, he was a very violent drunk. And my mother removed me from that situation before I was born and didn't want me growing up in that. And I'm glad that she did. And she married a gentleman when I was two years old, before I can remember. And he's been there for me my entire life. That is my father. That is my dad. Some fa- sometimes family is much more than blood. You know, that man stood up and he took me under his wing and treated me as his own son. And he is my dad. And I am his son. So your father and mother were married, your natural no, born father. They, they were, they, they, had, were, they, were they made married. a baby together. Yes. And while she was pregnant with you, she said that he was a drunk and a violent person. And then, it, and then she went to my, uh, she went back home to her grandfather's house, uh, my grandfather's house. And my grandfather told him one time, you ever show up here again, I'll shoot you in the head. This is her father? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Was, and do you believe your mother? Absolutely. Uncondi- Why? Unconditionally. Why do you believe her? Um, I mean, number one, she's my mother, and I don't think you should ever question your parents to begin with because they always have your best interest at heart. I've spoken with the gentleman, you know, and it reconfirmed everything she had told me about him. And not to mention, there was enough other people around at the time, grandfather, parents, aunts, uncles, that all reaffirmed everything that she had said. There was no reason to ever doubt her. But isn't it fair to your father to get his opinion because some women will lie on the father. Oh, no. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So do you think it was fair to your father to just take your mother at a word? Well, I, well like I said, I did speak with him on the telephone. And, and you asked him about oh, all yeah, that? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, he, and, you know, and he didn't deny anything. So you said, Dad, you are... Uh, I didn't call him Dad. You said Pops? I said Donald. I call him by his, <laughs> I call him by his proper first name. And you said, you are a drunk, abuser, Blah, blah, blah. And, and he, he said, said yes. He said, yeah. And he goes, yeah, back in the day I was. Oh, back you know? in the day. Oh, okay. And then he it was just very, very manipulated with his Christianity. One of these typical, you know, they burned their brain out on, on cocaine for 30 years. Your father and, did? Yeah, you know, cocaine and alcohol for 30 years. These can't even form a coherent thought or finish a sentence. And now you want to proselytize religion to me. And uh, uh, no, sorry. Do you love your father? My stepfather. Your who, real who is father. My, 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 your my natural step- father. No. You do not love him. He, no, he's a sperm donor, nothing more. You resent him? No, he's just insignificant. He doesn't even exist to me. Really? I had a dad, I had a dad growing up, and I what, still do have a dad. What do you do about the desire that comes sometimes that where you want to know your father better or wish that you had a relationship with him? I, or, I, I had a relationship with him. Or that things my, were different with your natural father. What do you do with those feelings when they come? I, 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 have, a, I have a father. I, just because he was the sperm donor doesn't make him my father. My father was the guy who married my mother when I was two years old that raised me for the last 35 years, who taught me the difference between right and wrong. The man who took me to every hockey practice at five o'clock in the morning. The man who would throw you know, the ball with me in the yard. The man who helped me with my homework every night. The man who taught me to shave and drive a car. So That's what, my father. But in reality, he is not your father. Physically, because, physically right. and biologically speaking, yes. Right, even more so than biologically, uh, biologically uh, figure, uh, speaking. Your real father is your real father. Everything else is an imitation and not the real deal. And that's why the father or stepfather can never complete that void that's there because they're not the real father. Only the real thing can do that. No, I I get that. Um, But I also have no desire to meet that gentleman either, you know. If you had a son and, you know, you have any children? Nope. You don't have any children? Nope. What are you waiting for? Uh, I don't know. How old did you turn the other day? 37. <laughs> 37. Do you want to I, get married and have family? I would love to if I could find a woman that I can tolerate for 18 years. That you can tolerate? <laughs> <laughs> what type of woman would you want um, or looking for? I mean, that's as unique as the, as the person you meet. You know what I mean? You can find somebody that's the complete opposite of you that you just find that you can't be without. And you can find somebody who you have every last thing in common with and you just want to choke them. Right. You know, so it, it's as unique as the individual. You can't put a label on chemistry. If you had a son and something went wrong with you and the mother before he was born, 
And even though you didn't like the mother, but you love your child, would you want your child to come to you and, oh, and work it out? Absolutely. I've, I've actually been in that situation recently. I was dating uh, a young woman, and uh, she got pregnant right before I went on tour. And she decided against all of my opposition and begging and pleading to terminate the pregnancy uh, while I was on tour in Germany. Um, I was due to be home in about seven days, and she couldn't even wait the seven days. And that turned into just World War III. Yeah. You know? Um, I, I had even offered to her that, you know, move in with me. I will pay all of your medical bills. I will pay everything. I will assume the role as a single dad, you know, when the child is born. Um, you can sign over whatever waivers or whatever you want. Just I'm open to any option on the table that doesn't involve killing the child. And uh, unfortunately, that wasn't, uh, she came back with this liberal mindset of, well, you don't have a choice in the matter. I'm like, well, I'd like to think that I do because, uh, you know, half of that child inside of you is mine. You yes, know? that's right. If I could carry it to term, I would, but I didn't, you know, write the laws on biology. Yeah. So. And just imagine how painful that was for you. Imagine what your natural father is missing and thinking about you. He feel the same way, even more so. Yeah, he was too busy doing cocaine and fixing horse races and going to prison. Do so. you, it, what would be wrong with going to him and forgiving him and... Well, he's no longer kept, alive. So. Oh, he's dead now? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. dead now. Do you wish at all that you had worked it out a little bit before he aspired? No, no, you know, like I said, I, like, I had two or three conversations with him, as a matter of fact. And our, our last conversation ended with, uh, I had just been coming out of jail for a, a misdemeanor marijuana possession, nothing major. And uh, he made the statement to me of, well, you think you can come in and out of my life whenever you want? I'm like, dude, I'm 24 years old. I've never seen you before. I'm like, here, let me make this real easy for you. Click. That Amazing. was the last time I ever spoke with him. I'm sorry to hear that. Do you realize you're never going to have peace until you can oh, forgive him? No. Well... How can you forgive somebody that just doesn't exist? Like, that person's never existed to me. He's never been in my life. But he does exist. He, he exists inside of you. Yeah. That's why you still had that longing for him because you are him. He is you. You guys are one together. And so yeah, but I mean, you would you could... say the same thing to a, a child that was born, uh, that was conceived through a rape? Absolutely. Okay. Even in a rape case, that father is still that child's father. Well, it's an unfortunate right. situation, but that connection to and desire for the father is still there even if it was by way of rape. Sure, but yeah. however do you want to, you know, meet that father and then facilitate, you know, some of the same, you know, obvious problems that the father would have if he was a rapist. You don't want that, you know, the sins of the father falling onto the child. But until you forgive your father by realizing he can help himself, you will repeat it, the same thing, over and over. That's why No, I, no, and, and, and you're exactly right. Yeah, I've noticed because, it. It's one of the reasons I don't drink alcohol. You know, uh, he was a very violent drunk. Uh, his brother, my uncle, uh, was implicated in murdering his first wife and then was actually convicted and sentenced of murdering his second wife. Right. His two sons were, you know, killed a couple of people in a robbery. You know, again, all whiskey, whiskey, yeah. whiskey. That's one of the reasons I, I don't drink alcohol. But you're still not going to be able to stop it until you forgive him so that the spirit can change. Yeah, so I'm once Satanist. You I'm not big on forgiveness.